In the last census, we may have counted a little over 700,000. So since the 1950s, we've lost over half of our population. Uh, between um, the censuses, it's taken every 10 years, between uh, the year 2000 and 2010, we lost nearly a quarter of a million people. And we, tend, uh, we continue to hemorrhage people uh, since, since 2010. But the reason why I bring this up is because when we talk about our population loss, we often don't talk about the historical events that happen around that as well. So it's very, it's very important to connect where we are today in, in historical analysis. Because often what uh, happens in terms of how Detroit's story gets told in the media, it's devoid of that, those historical events. And um, I'll tell you why that's important in just one moment. So these folks that were returning from the war were able to get housing and acquire land in suburban areas. And what that allowed um, certain people to do, because there, were, um, there was segregation um, made uh, by um, real estate agents and, uh, and uh, developers and uh, loan officers. And so people that had more melanin were not able to populate these outlying areas where people were able to get uh, housing that was subsidized by the federal government and also acquire land. And um, folks that <coughs> had more melanin, primarily um, uh, black folks, were forced into urban ghettos. Um, so there is uh, a large historical challenge around access to land. And fast forward it to today, what happened around 2007, 2008? Recession. The recession. So there were financial institutions, global financial institutions that were speculating on the housing market and creating a bubble and creating these speculative uh, financial products called derivatives, right? And what that created was uh, an unsustainable environment um, for speculation. And a lot of people fell prey to what was called subprime mortgage loans, which affected places like Detroit in a very disparate manner. Hundreds and thousands of people lost their homes, including my family. Um, we lost a home that I grew up in over 30 years. And so if you lost your home, you not only lost shelter, but you also lost your connection to something that we often take for granted which is access and ownership of land. So if you don't have access and ownership of land, how are you gonna grow your own food, which I consider a basic human right? Yeah, does that make sense? So here at Earthworks, we take this right, this human right, very seriously. Right now, Detroit is under what's called emergency management. We're under a state-imposed bankruptcy. When, when they say in the media that Detroit filed for bankruptcy, that's totally incorrect because all of our elected officials don't have power. Our, our power in the 50% uh, of the state's African-American black population has been displaced by what's called the emergency manager, which is a financial dictator imposed by the state. And the reason why I bring this up because this financial dictator, former employer, was the third largest law firm in, in, the, uh, in the globe called Jones Day. And Jones Day's clients are the same people that created the financial uh, recession. So I find it very curious to me that we're being imposed, um, the bankruptcy is being imposed by us by the same people that created the, the mess in the first place. So when you hear about Detroit in the media, please listen very carefully because what they're telling you in the media is not entirely accurate. And so there's more of like a group a groundswell, a grassroots movement to provide for our own needs, uh, institute uh, community resilience, and take back our power. And that begins with connecting with the land and growing our own food.